So um, I'm Elliot Higgins, I'm the founder of Bellingcat. Um, we do a lot of um, analysis of conflict and the claims and counterclaims that come out of conflict zones. Um, and often they can be quite varied, um, but always there's two sides to the story, as people like to say. So here's one example um, from the conflicts in Syria. So um, what we have here is the first ever video showing the remains of what's known as a barrel bomb. Um, a barrel bomb is an improvised explosive device. It's pushed out of the back of helicopters. Um, but looking at that video, you probably think that looks more like a bin that's been pushed over and the rubbish is just spilled on the floor. So um, there are lots of uh, reports uh, claiming that these uh, claims were completely untrue. Here we've got Russia Today saying barrel bomb baloney back in 2012, saying that no one would ever use these things. So what we do is start searching for all the footage that's coming out of Syria. And at that stage in the conflict, there was maybe about a thousand videos a day coming from the conflict. And I was particularly interested in videos like this. Um, what you have here is one of the earliest videos we have of a barrel bomb actually being pushed out of the rear of a uh, MI-8 transport helicopter. You can just see it there. Um, and this is, uh, you know, it's far away, it's a bit hard to see, but in this example, we've actually got someone inside a helicopter uh, lighting a bomb and pushing it out the rear of the helicopter. Um, the thing is, this is where claims of fakery comes in. How, the question is, how do we know where this is filmed? Could this be, you know, any other country? Maybe it's from a different conflict. Maybe this is CGI. Who knows? Well, we can see if we can find this town. And really, this turns into a game of spot the difference. On one side, you've got this aerial view from the video. And on the other side, we've got Google Earth satellite imagery. And if you spend enough time searching through this imagery, you can actually find the location in question. And if we rotate the image and then display them side by side, you can actually see the road layout's the same, the layout of the building's the same. Now, this is just a simple geolocation technique that we use to verify where this was filmed. But in September 2015, uh, Russia joined the conflict in Syria and started um, bombing what it, what it claimed was ISIS positions. Now, very early on, people were claiming that that wasn't true, that they were bombing other positions as well. Um, so you have Sergei Navarov here saying, do not listen to the Pentagon about Russian airstrikes. Ask the Russian Ministry of Def Defense. And in a way, that's what we did, because what we had coming out published on the YouTube channel of the Russian Ministry of Defense were lots and lots of gun camera videos showing the bombings happening. So um, there's a group of people on Twitter, there's just five or six people, who kind of took up a hobby of geolocating these videos, figuring out exactly where they were filmed. And over the first um, 30 um, days, uh, or first month or so, we had 30 videos that were published online by the Russian Ministry of Defense claiming to be targeting ISIS. Those people checked those videos, we cross-checked it as well, we double-checked it using that very simple technique, and we discovered that only one of these videos was actually filmed in ISIS-held territory. Now, it's very easy for us to say, well, it's not ISIS-held territory, how do we know what ISIS controls and what they don't? Well, the Russian Ministry of Defense also provided us with this handy map. And we took that map, and we go into Google Earth, and we can overlay the map in Google Earth, and then basically sketch around the edges inside of Google Earth, creating polygons showing who controls what. So every time we found a new coordinates, every time we made that kind of little match, we could immediately check. So here's one example of those videos. Um, this is, was claimed by the Russian Ministry of Defense to be a ISIS facility that it had bombed. Um, and we, again, we can quickly geolocate this. Using the satellite imagery, we can find the exact location. So you can see already it's zooming past the ISIS-held territory to the east and to this location. And this location is not in ISIS-held territory. And in fact, what this location is, is a bakery that was run by the Turkish charity, the IHH. Um, sometimes these um, untruths are really embarrassingly obvious. So here's a claim uh, posted on um, not only Twitter, but Facebook and other sites in multiple languages by the Russian Ministry of Defense saying there's irrefutable proof that the US are actually covering ISIS combat units as they're fleeing. And this is one of the images in question. Um, so this is described irrefutable evidence as Russian MOD is saying of an ISIS automobile convoy leaving Abu Kamal for Syria and Iraqi border. Now, there's one problem with this because that still is from this video. Um, and this is a computer game. Um, and this is, uh, and you can see on the top right corner, it says development footage. This is the work in progress, all content subject to change. Bottom right hand corner, we have a little fire button as well. So you can play it on your mobile phone. And Russia had published a still from this video claiming it was irrefutable proof. The other three images they we, we used were from old footage from Iraq that they're just taking screenshots from. Um, 
But what's really interesting about this example, this, someone had already used this fake video about a week earlier. And a week earlier, they'd posted the video onto Twitter saying this is um, a US drone attacking an ISIS convoy. So a different story, but the same video. And lots of people call this person now. I have a big audience of Twitter of the, the kind of news people and Warner type people who look at this stuff obsessively. Um, so when the Russian Ministry of Defense made this post, the kind of audience who saw that was already kind of pre-inoculated against this piece of false information. Everyone immediately who had seen it before was replying saying, this is not true. This is from this computer game video. We saw it last week. And this is the only time I've ever seen the Russian Ministry of Defense retract a claim. Usually they would never do that, but because there was such a huge reaction to this video, they had to retract it. They claimed that the images had been posted on accidentally, even though that's completely ridiculous. Because as you can see, there's lots of people, or little computer people being shot here. And they managed to take a still where that wasn't happening. And it was the same with the Iraqi video. So they purposely selected these stills. Um, in fact, uh, we can even see Vladimir Putin himself uh, in this video sharing some fake news. So this is uh, Vladimir Putin with Oliver Stone showing a, a YouTube video of his, or a video of his supposedly Russian forces attacking militants in Syria. The problem is this video was posted online a few years earlier. And this was a uh, US Apache helicopter attacking his servants in Afghanistan. Now, what we can do is play the two videos side by side and see if there's any similarities. So as you can see, even though the video on the side is blurry, it's clearly the same video. So Vladimir Putin himself is presenting a fake video to Oliver Stone. The one question I have for this, does he know it's a fake video or doesn't he know it's a fake video? And I'm not sure which answer is scarier. Um, I, I talk a lot about Russia, but there's other countries who are bombing people in uh, um, Syria as well. And this is um, a report that came um, through on, in March 2017, claiming a mosque had been bombed. Um, and there were lots of casualties. Um, the building had been heavily damaged. We heard about dozens of casualties. There was lots of videos being posted online from the site. Um, and at first, uh, people were saying, well, it must be Syria or Russia. But then this photograph was posted online by someone at the scene. This is not the remains of a Russian or Syrian bomb. It's the remains of a Hellfire missile. Um, and that's only used by uh, US uh, forces and their allies. So it appeared that it was a mosque full of civilians just before the evening prayers that had been bombed by a US aircraft, um, which was very surprising because it was the first incident we'd ever seen like that in Syria. Um, and in, in fact, US Central Command put out this press release um, saying that they'd actually struck an Al-Qaeda in Syria meeting location, killing several terrorists. But everything we were seeing coming from the ground showed it was a mosque. Um, every story was consistent. Witnesses were saying it was only civilians killed. So the US put out another statement. And this time they were saying that they had killed dozens of Al-Qaeda terrorist leaders, not just several terrorists. It was now upgraded to dozens of terrorist leaders. And this mosque on the left-hand side was the mosque that everyone claimed was bombed and actually wasn't. But um, we worked uh, with forensic architecture at Goldsmiths University, and we also worked with Human Rights Watch on this, um, searching through material, piecing together everything we could find out about this. And this, I'm gonna show you a short clip now from a video we put together. Everything you'll see in this clip is based on videos, photographs, and witness statements that we used to recreate the building and what happened. Our investigation seeks to establish what was the use of the building were there civilian casualties? And how did the incident unfold in time and space? Using available and sourced imagery, videos, satellite photographs, and survivor testimonies, we began analyzing the building before and after the strike. We asked a local photographer to document the interior after the strike. The mosque's entrance sign is still by the door. Shelves for worshippers' shoes indicate it is a mosque. As do the rugs in the mihrab, where the imam leads the prayer, which clearly indicate that contrary to U.S. statements, the building is a large and fully functioning mosque. So um, just before we published our report, Human Rights Watch uh, sent the report to the Central Command and they replied with this message, that they acknowledged that the draft human rights re report could not have taken into account the classified information available to US authorities. 
This may help explain why the US investigation reached a different conclusion. Well, in fact, what happened in a few weeks after that, they realized they did actually, in fact, bomb a mosque after all. Um, they still insisted it was full of Al-Qaeda, but they did at least admit one civilian casualty. Um, but had we have not done this investigation, that um, they would have never uh, accepted they, they had actually bombed a mosque. Um, so that's just some of the examples of the work we do at Bellingcat. Thank you very much.